do that, no KW, you know, huge on training and education, right? So this is one of the courses. And I honestly have to look up what the 36, 12, 3 means. Do, do you guys know what that means? I don't know. I'm new to KW, so I don't know. <laughs> okay.
kind of jot down or think about it if you want to, and I think it's important. All right, now in all these handouts, you guys, so first of all, with the courses that you're gonna, we're gonna be hopefully taking throughout this month, they all have these handouts, and it's a lot, and we're not gonna go word for word. It's, but it's our guide, and, um, and it's national, not just for our area. The latest uh, revision was in 2015. So a lot's happened since 2015, right? But a lot of good core information in here. So take time after class. Um, I do like to bind them because I, when I go home, there's just so much. Or you can make a, make a binder for, for this, this course. You're going to need a thicker one and put all in, all in one, whatever you guys, you, however you guys organize yourself. All right, so um, I might lose track a little bit with the PowerPoint. Who would like to be my PowerPoint? Who, who is, uh, what did Joey say? Who's the D? Who's the like a? Nima. <laughs> <laughs> You've been voted. Okay, good. So what I'd like to start off with is, well, first of all, sharing with you um, the, I, I, I just love open houses. And I know some of you also love open houses because you've been with uh, many of my open houses. So, um, when I very first started in real estate, super rookie, right? You guys might feel that too. Kind of. I thought, well, I'm a people person, so I'm going to go and do open houses. And I went and I did open houses. I sat with my broker at the time. A small brokerage, so he's basically mentor, coach, and everything. So I went with him, and I just watched him. I watched him for a good month, and I learned from him. And I, he's so smooth, you know, because he's he got the experience. So that's what I would first like to let you guys know: is um, go and mirror, uh, not mirror, what do you call it? Shadow. Take a couple of agents and go shadow first, and. Um, now keep in mind, if you go in shadow, it's still got agents open house, okay? So um, if they if they uh, allow you to maybe do some interacting and help the transaction, that's up to them. But I do recommend that. Christiane, you guys all know Christiane. Mm -hmm. She when she first started, she came to almost all of my open houses. Not only me, but she would go all to open houses and check it out. She was a student of open houses, so I want to also encourage that. So how can you guys do that if you're going to host open houses too? Well, you just have to uh, plan. You just have to do a little bit more planning. Uh, one thing I want to point out is um, open houses could be done every single day. I also started, when I very first started, I did uh, not quite every day, but almost every day. Um, then my broker said, hey, if you don't have anything going, just go host open house. And take your work, and that's your office for the two to three hours. So I do encourage that. You obviously, you have to, if you don't have your own listings, you have to get that okay. And it's not as easy if a property is um, occupied. It's easier when it's vacant, right? So think outside the box a little bit. And then often, too, uh, open houses are already taken. So what's another, what's another? If you want to do open house on a weekend, if the one to four slots already taken, anybody have an idea what what other times you can do? What's about the morning? Yeah, ten to ten to four. One. Yep. I said, oh, okay. Well, may I do before then? And I I did a lot of the early ones. Okay, so um, keep that in mind. Now, let's see, does anybody here have a listing it currently? One pending. Pardon me? One pending. Okay. But not now. Uh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Is it on the market? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. So if anybody wants to volunteer, let me know. We definitely we can it's vacant and stay. Yes, in San Jose, Berryessa area, 95131, and it's 
have a four bedroom, one and a half bath, single family. Uh, it's a townhouse. Um, and uh, I think it's listed at 748, 88. Um, we're going to go. I think we're going to um, put a deadline on it on Wednesday. For offers? Mm -hmm. What's your phone number? It's 408-250-2811. Great. Okay. There's a great opportunity in the vacant. Yes. I have two that are vacant. Uh, Koi Drive and then also Auburn Way in the Gulf of Town Bay. You can host it anytime. So, uh, and I like what some information in here talks about, and we'll go through it, is, um, you know, take something to do. You don't just sit there and look at the walls, right? When somebody's not coming in. It does say to make calls. I've gotten caught sometimes um, making a call or taking a call and people walk in. So maybe take a book or um, getting your prospecting, reviewing. It's endless what we can do, right? Okay. All right. So any general question that you guys want to make sure we hit the, in, in Okay. I'm sure we're going to get all your questions. So, the one thing I wanted to point out is, um, okay, so you guys know the purpose of these courses. This month we're, we're focusing on prospecting. Okay? And what does that mean? Finding business, right? We've got to go generate business. We've got to have to go find business. Sometimes, yes, when you get to Randy's level, and even me, I do get calls from my past clients. But most of the time, uh, we, us, we got to go generate it. we got to tell people. we got to go talk to people. And the good thing I, I love about Open Houses is face-to-face, -face, and, and that's, that's my um, strong suit. I mean, I like talking on the phone, too, but uh, I really like face-to-face. -face. And you're out there. You, you're, you're part of the market. You get all the feedback, you get all the comments, you hear the mentality of the buyers, you see the ages, you see the, the, um, the multi-family, uh, multi, uh, the generational people, you know, it's just, it's great. It, it, you're in the market, you really feel the market when you're out there doing open houses. So, but what I wanted to point out, and a lot of what you're going to read in here, um, you feel it may not pertain to you in some regards, but most of us are solo agents, meaning uh, we're not on teams. I know some of us do teamwork, but basically we're solo agents. So all these things that they tell us, oh, you do this, you do that, I mean, it's kind of overwhelming. So please start with a strong foundation, which would be what? What's, a, what's basic in, um, in open houses? What's a, the really basics of the foundation of posting an open house? Knowledge of the area. Okay. Knowing that area. Door knocking. Okay. Even before door knocking. Knowing the home. Knowing the area. Okay. Yes, the neighborhood. Knowing the home. Looking it up on MLS. Other homes in the schools. How about having signs? Yeah. How about scheduling? How about interacting with the listing agent? Hey, can you please tell me a little bit about? Give me some pointers. Um, Let's see, what else? H having, um, well, let me talk about a couple of things. As you guys know, again, I'm a team type person, and I always like to pull on people's information as we all learn more from others. Randy uh, asked a question to some of my colleagues, and Randy pointed out about this, uh, to get for me to get ready for this class. He said, um, you know, snacks and waters. You know, what are you going to bring? Do you have your flyers? So those core things that we're going to do at every open house, no matter where it is. So that's our foundation. Okay? So we want to be strong with that. Um, are you comfortable what to say when the visitors come in? Are you the person, are you old school like me and you're going to have signing sheets? You know? Are you going to have... Four, sign, four, or are you going to, like we must, you want to do one, you know? This is your foundation. You know, you're going to have to have your foundation. Um, I do have a container. Sometimes it doesn't quite fit in the trunk. 
but it has my my tissue and it has um, my, uh, my speaker. The very basics of what you're going to need, um, even toilet paper, because um, some some places are, are vacant and some places aren't safe. Some places are are um, bare, so obviously you're going to know ahead of time you got to bring a chair. All these basic things, right? So you guys all know all that. Anything I've missed? Anybody can add? What, what, what else would be a basic? Our foundation. Pretty much cover it? Yes. Um, doing an ad on social media that you're doing. Yes, yeah, so that's the next step up. Yeah, but that's good. Like, what that means. Okay, so we got the foundation right, right? Um, all right, so then, Anise, what did you mention? Going to journal. She's been doing some open houses for uh, Koi Drive, and she's told me she's going to go around the neighborhood, and you go over to your own old neighborhood too. Yeah, because I wanted to see my picture like uh, often. So I do about an hour and a half at the neighborhood I'm very close to the home I'm hosting mm -hmm. and then my own neighborhood. Right. I think that's a great idea. Cool. Right. Great idea. It's kind of on the same concept of um, someone has taught us to send all our listings or our open houses to our database. Not just posting it on social media, but sending it by like email, like our flyers. We all know how to create flyers or we you know, we um, have access to our flyers, whatever it might look like. So you, you send your your flyer to your database. You know, um, whatever whatever uh, will get us out there. Okay. So, and uh, Christina, you did say social media mm -hmm. yeah. posting, it's getting people there, getting people there. All right. So. I want to go over, was that a little ground rules? Yes. Okay, so when, throughout these classes, I, what stood out to me, and I think is a page three for you guys? What stood out to me is six and eight. Everybody will have three different things. But I really like six. Help each other learn because none of us is as smart as all of us working together. Mm -hmm. And you know that's like our office, you know, we're family, we're all very supportive. And number eight, Enjoy your time in class and commit to at least implementing at least one thing that you learned today. And that goes back to um, being a sole agent. I don't know about you guys, but my day is extremely full. And um, I do need to get a little bit, I'm working on being more organized. And but it's overwhelming at times. Everything that we need to do, not just real estate related, and balancing it, right? So, um, if we can at least do one thing, add one thing, okay? So at the end of class, I'd like to know, you're gonna, uh, we're gonna share what each of us is gonna implement new that maybe you hadn't done, or maybe you did it so-so. I already know what mine is, thanks to Denise. She reminded me. Okay, so we have page five. Oh, is that page five? Uh, it says slide five, course page four. Is this one right here? Oh yeah, so that one. Page five. Okay, so page five, you guys. So throughout the um, handout, also it has um, bits and uh, um, you know from different agents, but they're all KW agents, and their um, how they have been successful doing open houses. Can I add a couple of things to that? Absolutely. Hey, it's interactive, you guys, okay? Yeah. Before we go on. Yeah, a couple things as far as sharing. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is I look at the comps and I compare it to my listing or the open house you're doing. And I weigh it out. And for example, the one I had recently in Little Glen, there were some comps that were, some were nicer, some were bigger, some were not as nice. So I said, okay, well, why is mine better? So as I compared the properties, 
I say, yeah, that one is probably newer, but you're not going to have the lot size. Or this one here is not a bigger lot, but this is moving already. This one here is nice, but this has the own solar panels. This has this. And so you have to be able to compare and tell why your property is superior to the comps. And you just got to be creative. Look at it. What is it? Do you have a better lot size? Do you have a better kitchen? Uh, do you have better movement ready? So know your property very well. And the other thing I like to do is talk to the seller and say, hey, tell me the hidden features. What is it that we don't really see that is a good selling point? And the other thing that's really important is what are the things in the neighborhood that I could use as a good selling point? Because there's a lot of things in the neighborhood that nobody knows about if they don't live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so you can use these things to just sound like you really know what you're talking about. For example, that one in Willow Drive, there is a, uh, a wife's club on that street <laughs> where all the wives get together and they have like little get-togethers and talk about kids and talk about school and all this. So find out as much as you can about the property so you can sell it. Even though the primary goal for an open house is not to sell the house, it's to just find another client. But if you come off as very knowledgeable, it's a better chance that you're going to gain a client. So I just want to add that. Perfect. I, I love it. Um, now, that's as a listing agent, right? What about us that if we host an open house for an agent and uh, we haven't had a chance to talk to the seller? We still can get that info. So we're going to ask Randy, say, hey, Randy, tell, tell us about, hey, what, what's the highlights of exactly what he said? We have to ask him if, if we don't have that listing, right? I ask the same thing for my, for my sellers. Tell me why, number one, why did you pick this home? And what have you loved, what have you, um, what are the highlights? What have you loved about living here? And so when people come into our, our open house, I point that out. Okay? So we're going to do a little role playing if it works out for a time. We'll, we have another, just about an hour. Um, but I point that out. And while I'm on the topic, and um, what I like to, uh, to um, when visitors come in, obviously we welcome them. He talks all about that. We're talking about that. After we say our initial hello, you know, I give them a flyer, here's some information about the property, and I said, you know what, I just want to make sure, I want to point out some highlights. And I pick three things. There's always something you can pick. Um, two to three things that I, I mention, and then uh, some of those things that the sellers have told me, I definitely. Oh, and my seller, uh, you know, really love living here because it's so close to Santa Cruz. It's only about a 30-minute drive. It's so close to work. And it's gated, so a lot of the residents, they walk inside, and that's their exercise. They know it's a three-bedroom, two-bath. They know all that stuff. You know, we want to tell them the benefits, not, the, not all the features. They can figure that out. It's all, and it's all the information uh, is on the flyer. Okay, so page five real quick. Um, so throughout, you're going to see these little ex or, what's that one? Uh, well, in, input from other agents. So read through it because there's a lot to learn. So I just, with this gentleman, his name is Ron Cattle uh, in Virginia, uh, his second sentence, open houses are one of the easiest, simplest, fastest, and cheapest way to grow your business. And that was true for me. There's not much money. Um, you have to have to buy snacks. You have to have to get, uh, you know, different things. And but if you really look at it, there's not a whole lot of money we spend on uh, on doing open houses. And his last paragraph, the first sentence, Ron stresses that an open house marketing strategy is absolutely the key. So it's not just showing up. We got to take that next step, which is what Anissa and which Christina talks about, and which I know a lot of you already do, by inviting. And so uh, I got, I, this is a, was a good refresher for me too. Uh, Laura always says you, when you teach something, it, you learn also. It helps you. So it's just refresh. I used to do all these things, but I kind of, you know, I just got to get more organized. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so the next page is... Oh wow, I didn't know that, that was going to be kind of okay. The next page. This one, uh, these are the different classes that this course has. 
and Laura, as we point, she pointed out, picked up the highlights, okay? And all these classes are to help us to generate at least two to three transactions a month if we do the work, which is about three hours a day, give or take. Okay, so page seven. Are you at the open house to sell the house or pick up buyers and sellers? Well, it's actually both, right? So I want to make one key point on this. We have to respect, especially us that are doing open houses for other agents, which I still do a lot. Uh, we have to respect that seller. And also, I want to let you guys know, and I'm just not keen on all the, the cameras and the things and the things that sellers check up on. Even the ring, you know, and the doorknob, the doorbell, they can see who comes and goes. They can hear what you're saying. Be very, very mindful. And they're not going to tell us. They're not going to tell you, oh, I have a camera on. Oh, I'm watching you. That's good. That's a good. Don't go through their um, covers looking for snack. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for sure, that's, you don't realize it now that that is happening. So yes. It's a good. Right. Yeah, so. Be mindful and telling you guys, we don't want to say the wrong thing. We don't want to, number one, uh, we've got to uh, have respect for, number one, that agent that allowed us to do their open house. You know, that's a privilege. That's a, uh, that's a gift because it gives us the opportunity to meet people um, and get our own listings out of it and generate more business. So I totally respect anybody that I'm doing open house for. And um, I respect the sellers with um, promoting their home. My my main um, my main purpose, honestly, is I know I know it's also to get more people, uh, more business buyers and sellers. But honestly, is to represent that home for that seller. We are a reflection of number one, the agent, and number one, number two, our brokerage. And you, and you know, they're all the same goes, you don't know who's watching. I'm sellers like, send a decoy and see what you're saying. Just be very mindful. I'm not saying they do, but I'm just saying just be very mindful. Some sellers are a little high strong and, right? Well, one thing is, even if the sellers don't send somebody in, the neighbors always come in and the neighbors will talk to the seller. But the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is about the, uh, the AV equipment, the ring, doorbell, the nest, and all that. Mm. When you're going with the buyers, let your buyers know that this technology exists and not to say too much while you're in the house. Because you don't want the sellers to hear, oh, we love this house. Do whatever it takes to get it. <laughs> you don't want the sellers to hear that. So give them a, a heads up. You know, hold those conversations and tour out of the house and away from the front door because the ring doorbell picks it up. That's the truth Not that I've gotten caught. But we got, uh, there was a little dog came in the house with the owner, but she was holding the dog. And I thought it was okay, but the seller did not like it. Was the seller there? No. Nope. Oh, they saw it? On through the ring. Oh. You guys know what the ring is? Yes. It's uh, like the doorbell and it, it, it's, you can see. Um, we can see them. Does it just go on automatically? Yeah, it's motion. And people walk up, it turns on, and it's audio and visual. Yeah, that's what you're saying. But I didn't. So now I, I make sure. Hey, is it okay if somebody has a small dog that they bring in? So the lady, um, she figured out I don't want to leave the dog in the car. It's too hot. Oh, it's okay. Just make sure you hold the whole time. And I thought that was okay, but the seller did was not. Um, happy. And that wasn't my best thing. So. Anyway, so I just, we, want, we need to share all these things with each other because you're not going to think about it, right? But it's super important that technology, people are listening and, and watching and, you know, you just be, be aware. All right, so, um, and please, again, this is interactive, so if somebody has something to add, please don't. Oh, I do. Yes. Uh, one issue was leaving the lights on. Oh, okay. I leave. Word, that's what I want you guys to think of it. When be respectful of number 
one, the agent that's allowing you uh, to host open house for them because if something goes wrong, it goes on them. And do you think they're going to bite you back? No, not, you know, like that was kind of, I don't know. Uh, now I'm more careful about that, uh, you know, to check but, um, about the dog. But other than that, yeah. And then also um, lock everything, turn everything off. As far as what Teresa was saying, what I like to do is take notes. As I walk in the house, what lights are on, what lights are not on, what go, you know, windows are open, and leave it exactly the way you found it. Yes. And, and it's hard to remember. That's why I like to kind of like jot down notes. Now, when I leave, I just go down my notes and say, okay, this is on, this is off, this is locked, this is open. And I leave it exactly the way it was. And also on that note, um, is if you see something wrong or something needs to be taken care of, you know, let the, let the listing agent know, right? And then we'll talk more about uh, that a little later about um, giving them a good report. Or should we talk about it now? Let's just talk about it now. Yeah. Okay, so at the end um, of the open house, if you're hosting it for somebody else, it's always a good idea to, I, I would say within an hour, give a report, a summary. Because some of those sellers are like, oh, they want to know how many people, how many, did, what's that, what's, what's the comments? And give comments, both positive, give all the comments. Um, also, if you see something that needs to be, uh, you know, taken care of, let the agent know. Also, when you get visit, when agents come, uh, you take photos of the business cards and you send those because we're supposed to follow up with all the um, agents. As a listing agent, we want to follow up with all the agents that show the property. Anything else you want to add? Open house ladies and gentlemen. I, I, do, I think that the sellers, they linger. They will sit in their cars down oh. the street <laughs> and watch. That's how it happens. Yeah. They watch, they go check where your signs are. <laughs> they're, they're on it. They are. So again, going back to what's the word? Respect. Okay. Yes. Quick question on how to handle the situation. What if you get there and the sellers are yes. still there with the beer? <laughs> okay. I would ask you for one myself. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> what did you do? I just reminded, hey, just a reminder, open house will be starting in 10 minutes. Okay. You know. And then what did they do? Waited till about 9 minutes after that, and then they finally left. I have sellers that. Did you tell them why? Did you tell them why it's best when they're not there? No, I didn't know what to say. Well, just let them know that when people come to a home, the sellers are there, the owners are there, they're a little uncomfortable, and they make them feel really short because they just they feel uncomfortable. If the owners are not there, they feel more comfortable to walk around and really figure things out and picture themselves in there. It's hard when the owners are and most sellers will understand that. Yeah, that's true. And then the, some sellers that insist on staying. Yeah. And it's their home, so we have to respect them. So, yeah, I've had sellers that would, would the thing is to just stay. That's okay. okay. I do. Yeah. And don't sell her. Follow. Huh. <laughs> okay. One quick note on you mentioned a seller sometimes I hang around and watch and see where your signs are. I would like to put the house the sign in front of the house first with hours. I'll say, here's the open house hours. Please do not disturb occupants. We'll see that three times. And then go put out the rest of the signs. And uh, this way if people do see a sign, let's say you put out two and you're out and putting out the rest. If they start following the signs and they get there and no and nobody's there, they uh, they're going to get mad, but if they see the sign with their hours, then everything is fine. That's true, and that's one thing that Alan Wong uh, he, uh, told me what he does. They put their signs out super early, and a lot of them. I read in there they put out days early. <laughs> yes, oh. I don't know the days. Not in our area, we can't. Yeah. Uh, well, this, like Yvonne said, this book is nationwide, yeah. and it's a lot of stuff that's not what's going to happen out here. Yeah. And also, since it's a few years old, yeah. Also, I just learned, I have a listing in Los Gatos, and I put signs out, open house, with an arrow, and 
one agent came in and said, this is not going on here. I, I wasn't aware. Not here. Yeah. Not gonna, you can just have just a open house and arrow, nothing else. No information on brokerage oh. or phone number. Just arrows. That is true. Some, very much some cities have Saratoga like that. Saratoga is that way. Yeah. I don't know. Los Angeles. Los Angeles as well. I don't know. I guess Saratoga is. Find out what the... Yeah, you know, Kelly gave that to us. Uh, let me get back to you on that. Okay. You can help me with that. Maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> Do you mind getting that from Kelly? She has to... Uh, no, you know what? MLS. 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 Can you do that for us? And then pass it out. Okay. Thank you for that. They do. Sign rules in each city. Yep. Santa Clara has it too. The enforcer came around when I was doing open. Oh, welcome. I'm here, Miss Cherry. And she goes, well, do you know you're not supposed to have signs? I said, no. Where? Santa Clara. Okay, so, so I, I, I don't tell me about the, the stuff I can read. 
Because you know what? Uh, you That person, like me, I had already looked. I already knew about three bedroom, the 1700s, with all the, all the specs. But what I want to know is what we talked about before. So let's role play. Who wants to role play? Um, can you be my visitor?
Not quite. Uh, I live in Milpitas, but I want to move out this way. Right. Well, as you know, this is 95051 area code is one of probably like the safest location. So, okay. Um, okay, this great. is a nice house. It was built in 1969, but it was remodeled mm -hmm. uh, twice. And uh, as you will see, uh, everything looks brand new. Okay. It's in a mood in condition. Okay, great. If you see anything that uh, you think it needs uh, to be fixed with, you know, but I don't think you will. Okay. But let me show you. I, I like to start you from the kitchen, if you don't mind. Okay. Because um, this is usually very important to you. Probably uh, uh, a wife and, uh, and the kids, too. <laughs> but uh, I'd like you to check this uh, kitchen cabinet or the, the latest that uh, it was added onto the house. Okay, good. It's brand new. You can see all the, the uh, appliances are all brand new. You know what? Yeah, I, 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 I
And so after I get a lot of information from them, why they're there, and I'll, you know, they say, oh, we've been waiting for a while, so we you see anything you like? And, you know, six, eight, twelve years, twelve months ago, they're always going to say, oh, yeah, we keep getting these out. Mm -hmm. And I say, gosh, if you're working with me, how the hell is there? Because I have a lot of people I got in these homes. But, you know, either way, if you want this one, I can help you get it. Or if you don't like this one, I like that. So it's just, I mean, different approach for everybody. Um, Elise, uh, I do have some suggestions, so we will role play, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I do have music um, at my open houses. And I find a place where they can hear it, but it's out of the way.
I've been there. I've been to a. Uh, if you've been in, going to open houses and you see some agents, oh, this is another um, tip. I'm an agent hosting my open house. You come in. Um, Randy's an agent, and he's he's here with his guests, uh, his clients. Some agents, they won't give him the time of day, which was me a lot of times. I would come with my clients, the agent would give me a time of day. But why not? You know, twofold. Number one, that agent down the road might be looking for another brokerage, and you know Keller Williams has profit share. Keep that in mind. Make a connection with that agent. I treat that agent just like any other um, uh, visitor, and they appreciate it. I said, well, um, here's some information about the property. Oh, hi, Randy. Oh, hi, I'm Yvonne, and let's say, yeah, name's Jack. Hi, Randy. Um, may I have your card? Let me give you his card. Maybe he's already going to give me a card. Um, so I would like to tell all of you a little bit, and I just like their, all the other visitors, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the property. Um, always, for me, I always want to know why are the owners selling. So I just say that and a couple other things and I um, just want to point out a few things and I tell them whatever I want to point out. Highlights about the property. Uh, owners have lived here 15 years. They're selling because they're moving to Texas to be close to the family. Uh, you're going to love it. We, uh, Randy, we've already done all the inspections. Disclosures are ready if your clients like it. Um, and offers are being reviewed as they come in. So I'm giving him respect. It's all about respect, you know, and um, be professional. You know, give him the cur give that other agent the courtesy. You know, I've been there. Like the uh, agents, when I come in, they don't even talk. Oh, because why? What? Why? Why are they not talking to us? Oh, I can't get anything out of it. They already have an agent. Yep. I'm gonna give you one story. It's a, it's um. I'm not telling you to brag, uh, but I'm just sharing. So it's kind of one of my highlights of my um, open houses. So I engaged with a couple, and I said, oh, so this is my pack question. How's your search been going? This is what, how's your search been going? You know, and then they'll say something, and that'll leave me, oh, I'm just starting. Oh, it's hard, hard like a lie. It's so exciting. It's a great market right now. It's great for buyers. Interest rates are phenomenally low. Fantastic. There's so much more inventory, and it's calm. Uh, oh, and then you'll say something like, oh, you know, keep, keep getting beat out. I said, oh, okay, well, you know, there's strategies you can do to get yourself stronger. So I just give them information. So obviously I know, um, so how many offers have you put in? Say three or something. Three. Okay. All right. Were you close? Mm. Were you close? To, were you close to getting your offer? Were you, like, close? And they'll say, oh, yeah, we were second. So obviously I know she's got to have an agent. Right. So I'm still engaging. I still wanted to build a report. And this one lady and cu this couple, we talked forever, oh, 15 minutes. But that's kind of forever at open house. Yeah. yeah. Kind of forever. Oh, on that note, let me remind you where I left off. I know Randy does this. I do it. Uh, I know Alex does his best to have either a co-agent, a colleague, and some agents don't want to do it. Oh, I want to share. Well, trust me. If you get five people at the same time, let's say you have five people come in your whole open house, um, and they happen to come in all the same time, you're not going to connect. It's better you tag team and invite a lender. Lenders are great. Okay, so where I left off was uh, what's offer. Okay, so I connected with her and the couple, and, and she told me her what her goal is, and I said, you know what? Just keep trying. You're going to do it. It's good. You're going to be fine. Just don't give up and blah, blah, blah. And then I get a call two weeks later. Um, and she had an agent. And she had this. She had that already. And she said, well, you 